Hi, I'm Chris, and welcome back. And for this week's episode, we're polishing the body. Now, this is one video I've been looking forward to making and putting together because I, if 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 I was to say there was one thing I get asked more often than others, is I get a lot of people asking how I polish my body works. So to get started, it, basically all the tools I use is what you saw in that first picture. Barring anything that was missing was a tub of hot water. Um, I have 2,500 wet and dry sandpaper. Um, I have the red microfiber uh, polishing cloth that I've had from Kemp Models for quite some time. I've tried a few other different microfiber cloths, um, but I keep going back to this one. I just feel like it, it's, it's good for not only applying, but also buffing off. Um, and also the Kemp Models Hyper Polish. Uh, I will be honest, this is my second bottle of the Hyper Polish. I just love it. I, I, you know, I think it's 50 mil. Um, bottle, um, lovely little aluminium bottle as well, um, and the price it's you know, it's very cheap, and I think for the price, the quality is is just I, I love it. I mean, you'll you'll see uh, the the quality of it later on. So to get started, um, I have like I said my hot water, uh, and I get my 2,500 sheets, and I cut them up into tiny squares, and I just put two in at a time. I don't want to put too many in, and you know, just in case I'm wasting them and whatnot. Um, and I like to sand in one direction. So be it from front to back or side to side, I never go around in circles, swirls, anything like that. I try and keep it nice and uniform, uh, nice and neat, um, and I literally apply as little pressure as possible. As you can see as well, I've got an old tea towel down, very old tea towel down, um, because it does get quite wet and quite damp, because I do use a lot of water. Um, and quite often as well, refreshing the water, uh, I like to keep it nice and warm. Uh, is, is it just for me as well? I don't know. I just like having nice warm water. Uh, but as you've probably seen in some of the images there, at certain angles, after a slight uh, wet sand and a dry, um, if, when you get it up into the light, uh, you're looking for any shiny spots. And at this point now, uh, as you can see, I've pretty got it much all uniform. And I got rid of all the shiny spots, because what you don't want is any shiny spots. What you're trying to do is you're trying to take that clear coat um, flat. So you try and get it nice and level, nice and even. Um, so when it comes to polishing it up, it's going to have a nice, smooth, uniform finish. Um, so, and like as, as Polly saw as well, is dry it often. Uh, get, an old t uh, get an old cotton towel or get some kitchen roll, kitchen towel, whatever. And every, every so often, Give it a dry, a good dry, a good wipe, and get it under the light and see if you can see any shiny spots. Any shiny spots, you don't want any shiny spots because, like I said, that, that, that's not going to be level enough. Um, so, once you've got rid of them and you're quite happy and you feel it's a nice, consistent, um, clouded um, effect sort of thing from where it's been sanded, um, ready to move on to the polishing. Here we are to our third application of the hyper polish. Um, I do apply it possibly more so than others. You know, I might put a bit too much on. Uh, I like to have a lot to work with in one sitting. Um, so I always go for about a pea size, as you see, spread it out. And I like to work it in. Now with this, unlike the wet sanding, I do apply pressure and I do go around in circles and swirls, back to front, side to side, and I try and work it in everywhere. Um, as you can see there, it was all cloudy from the thingy, uh, from the polish, uh, buffing it off, and you just see the difference it's making after each time. I mean, I just love this piper polish, it, it's just brilliant. And you can see there from the back where it's unsanded to that, the difference is just night and day. I think in the end I went through about five applications on, this, on, on the roof. I think, I think it was. Um, I always tend to do the wet sand on the roof and then polish it first because then I, I, I know how to gauge the, the amount of applications of polish for the rest of the bodywork. So, you know, on the boot lids, on the, on the sides, and the bumpers and whatnot. So I know, you know, if I'm doing five applications on the roof, I know it might take five or le less even on the sides or the bumpers and stuff and whatnot. Um, so the rest of it is it's a little bit easier once you've worked on the roof first the rest of it kind of like falls into place it's just a very time consuming but it's definitely worth it um, you know there's a lot of people uh, you know I've spoken to they're very scared or you know anxious worried cautious you know they're worried about burning through um, f for that I, 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 you know I've said to a lot of people if you're a little bit worried a little bit cautious a little bit anxious about 
taken that plunge into the polishing side of things, grab some spare parts, grab anything, you know, if you've got anything in your spares box, be it a bumper, be it a bonnet, a spoiler, if you can find anything flat, even some spare clear parts, you know, you paint them up as you would, prime it, give it a day, colour it, give it a day, clear it, give it a week, give it two weeks, give it however long you want, uh, the longer the better, and, and then get practising your polishing on with that. You know, you know, get down to wet sanded it, you know, a, a couple of sheets of uh, wet and dry sandpaper, they're not going to cost an arm and a leg. Uh, and as you say, with, with this hyper polish, it's not, it's not expensive at all, and y you've already seen the, the quality of it, I, yeah, it's, like I say, it's the second bottle I've had, and it's my go-to polish, really. It's if, if you ever buy anything from Kent Models, honestly, grab a bottle, stick it in the basket, it ain't going to add much difference to the price at all. I think it's like three, three pound fifty. So, yeah, you really cannot go wrong at all. So now we get to the tricky stuff. We're getting to the side panels, the doors, the bumpers. And this is where it really starts to. This is where it starts to get trickier. You know, at least when you do the roof, it's nice and flat, and you're building that confidence up to get you into the rest of it. Um, literally, with this, you just got to take your time. When wet sanding, don't apply any pressure and just take your time and if need be you know sand a little bit dry it sand a little bit more dry it again check and check and check um, the more you do it over time you tend to feel uh, the, the difference um, because you're not applying a heap amount of pressure you, you can kind of get a great feel for the surface and, and when you first start the, the wet sanding process you can find you can kind of feel like it's it's not snatching, but you can feel the texture, the clear, and the, the sandpaper. You can feel like it's a, a rough surface, and, and over time you start to get used to the feel. You can get to you know the, the feel of it. You can you can feel it getting smoother. So the more you get used to it, the the longer you'll probably go over time between sanding and drying and checking. But like I said, when I first started, I was drying so often because I was so uh, worried about burning through and. You know, there was quite a few times I burned through, and I actually burned through on this one actually, on, just on the back, um, on the back between where the back arch and the bumper meet, sort of thing. There's just a tiny little bit of burn through, of like a, a, a little bit of a raised lip. So yeah, if you are wanting to get into it and you are worried about burning through, honestly, the trick is is to stop and dry and check more often than maybe sanding. To be honest, you know, just just. Don't apply any pressure. Seriously, take your time. Honestly, just take your time. You know, enjoy the process. Put a bit of music on, relax, enjoy it, and take your time. And you know, to get it started off, dry, dry, dry. You know, take plenty of time drying, uh, and you'll you'll be fine. So as you can see on the side there, uh, just about to give it a dry, and then what you'll see is 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 like a a, a uniform cloudiness effect as such across the sides there, and you can still see quite a lot of shiny spots and uh, to be honest just in that side skirt there and around the side of the arches I, 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 uh, to be honest I'm not too worried about those bits I, I don't want to risk uh, burning through because on raised parts near edges the the clear paint uh, any paint really is at its utmost thinnest you know and it will not take much to burn through at all you know, once you've polished it up you won't notice that much of, of a difference because you don't tend to get as much orange peel either uh, towards edges and you know the, the raised parts um, so it's it's kind of like six one one after the other you know it's it, you know it's, as it's thinner and the, you know there's less paint there there's there's also less orange peel so it's, it's it kind of like balances itself out um, it's not just burning through on the sand. You've got more chance of burning through on sanding, uh, but there has been the other occasion where I've, I've burnt through where polishing and buffing off, yeah, buffing off especially, um, more so on you know like door handles and things like that. So I mean this this body is th this S13 body. Um, to be honest, I think it's a great body shape for anyone you know willing to start into the the, the polishing side of things. I think that you know there's not too many angles there's not too many raised parts and i actually quite enjoyed working on this one it was quite smooth it was quite flat 
uh, and it wasn't too difficult. It wasn't too many difficult shapes, um, angles, anything. I, I, like, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it, and I, I, I genuinely think that anyone who, who's willing uh, to get into polishing, grab an S13, grab this kit, go grab this kit. Yeah, I, 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 I think it. Yeah, it's, it's quite an enjoyable one to work on, uh, especially for polishing. You know, and it's, it's these sort of kits that when you're working on, you'll build up that bit of confidence into your next one then you'll start getting a bit more adventurous you know for your more your, your curved bodies maybe like a Porsche you know you know there's a lot of curves to a Porsche you know and things like that and you, you, you build up confidence with a lot of things you, you know painting assembling gluing and polishing and you've all got to start somewhere and honestly you, you know you, you might be anxious but definitely give it a try um, it, it's it's something that I've really appreciated um, since doing and I, I, it's turned out to be my favourite part for the sense that it's it really brings it to life you know it gets rid of any orange peel uh, you know it just gives the finish such a nice smooth clean finish and I just really think it adds to the realism of uh, you know of that finished model so yeah if, if you're ever thinking about polishing definitely give it a try don't be scared grab a few spare parts jump in and away you go I mean, there has been times when I've been sat working on um, uh, polishing bodies. I think, I think in one sitting, I've probably gone five, maybe six hours. Uh, you know, wet sanding the most time-consuming bit, uh, not wanting to burn through anything. Then obviously the polishing it up as well. Um, I found this body was quite a quick sand job and polish job, and you know, I think it's between an hour and a half, maybe maybe two hours, maybe at the max, <laughs> which was quite difficult uh, getting it all down into 50 minutes worth of footage on here. Um, but it's it, it, as long as you've got a bit of music on I find you know you just sit back and relax you just take your time you don't even have to sit and do it all in one sitting you know you might want to sand your roof one night you might want to move on to the door panels the next day you know there's no time limit it's not going to expire you know you, you could spread it over a few days over a week or so you know and just just take your time. Yeah, yeah, I think as well if you, you know, for those beginners or anyone who wants to polish, I, I think it's something that, I think once you'll pick up, but you get doing and you get going, I think it'll be something you'll really appreciate, and and you'll probably do it going forward on every build, because um, I know that's exactly what I did. You know, I was quite anxious and held off for such a long time. Um, and then I thought, you know what, I'm finally going to take the plunge, and I did it, and here I am every build is, is you know, it, it's it's my favourite part, and I, I just love the way it, it can go from Orange Pill City to almost like a mirror. So there is quite a few um, smaller parts that I won't polish up, such as the wing mirrors, those I, I will not touch. Um, you, you tend to find though with the shape and the curvature of the wing mirrors that once you've applied the paint you will not see any orange peel on it anyway because it's, it's it, I don't know if it's thinner or you know as such um, but it just looks much smoother anyway as it is um, you'll find me you know sanding uh, as you can see here the bumpers uh, and I'll also uh, as, not, as long as they're not a, a ridiculous shape uh, go for the spoilers as well um, and I find they're a bit harder to polish up uh, let's sand them down and polish them up um, but as you can see there on, on the boot lid uh, is you know and on all the sides it's all quite uniform with, with a light reflection you can see the light reflection like it, it is kind of almost in sort of similar shape direction going across the board i was i was really happy with how this is sanded down and there's just the tiniest tiniest little bits of clear that i didn't touch towards some of the edges um and as you can see on this rear spoiler there's a couple of sig marks in it. Disappointingly, I didn't notice and pick up before uh, putting the paint down. Um, you can see, maybe just see the shiny spots there. Uh, but I say this is all sanded down now. The whole body's sanded down. And there's the front bumper. I didn't go too mad. Uh, I possibly did. Uh, I definitely did the sides there because there's much more surface area. But I didn't do over the front, over the, you know the, the bottom, over the lip, over the grills. I just did where the, the, the across where the number plate would be. So as you can see here, it's, it's polished up. There's a few little, uh, like, sink marks. Uh, but do you know what? I'm not too worried. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm really happy with how it's come out. Again, five applications of polish on this. That is, you know, once I've worked out what it is on the on the roof, it's the same everywhere. So on this bumper, you can see across the top there, that's where I sanded it. 
and then the sides five applications of polyg each time and again work at one time so work on this side once that's done work on the next side once that's done work on the front so just take your time and concentrate on one area don't try and do it all at once um, and do you know what I'm, I'm really happy with this is how it's turned out um, as you can see if you remember from you know right at the start with all the orange peel and what's going on and then you look at this the difference a wet sand and polish makes it's just huge I mean this is you know proof why I, I think it's my favorite part you know it just makes it look so much better so much nicer it just gives such a nice finish and I also think it helps make the paint come to life I mean you can see there the metallic fleck and you know that that, that difference between the dark and the lighter shades of blue really comes out now that bodywork has been polished up and there we are another video comes to an end uh, thank you so much for watching I really do appreciate it um, I hope this video helps some of you out there and inspires you to uh, jump in um, thank you very much. Take care. See you next time. Cheers.